CDC Director Rochelle Walensky came out on CNN today and confirmed that vaccinated people still spread COVID-19. And this is what she said. Hey, look, I'm here on YouTube and I don't know what the WHO says because we have to abide by those guidelines here on YouTube. I'm just letting you know what the director of the CDC said. Look, I'm just a guy on the internet, right? What do I know? But hey, she's the director of the CDC. So maybe we should uh, maybe we should listen to her. I don't know. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. But look, the whole point is she came out and she said this on CNN. So I'm going to play the clip. And, you know, I, I don't really see the point of vaccine mandates anymore if if this is the case if vaccines no longer prevent you from spreading covid uh, this is her quote this is her quote so let's play it here uh, with wolf blitzer <laughs> wolf blitzer on cnn but what about uh, all the fully vaccinated people who get the breakthrough infection can they pass it on could they pass it on to their children could they pass the virus on to older people especially more vulnerable people with the uh, underlying health conditions and that's exactly the point that we made in our guidance. So yes, they can with the Delta variant. And that was the reason that we changed our guidance last Tuesday. Um, our vaccines are working exceptionally well. They continue to work well for Delta with regard to severe illness and death. They prevent it. But what they can't do anymore is prevent transmission. So if you're going home to somebody who has not been vaccinated, to somebody who can't get vaccinated, somebody who might be immunosuppressed or a little bit fail, uh, frail, somebody who has um, uh, COVID morbidities that put them at high risk, I would suggest you wear a mask in public indoor settings. I thought the whole point of vaccine mandates was to prevent the exact thing she's talking about, prevent the exact thing, right? The whole point, the whole justification for it, the reason why we're firing loyal, hardworking people for not getting vaccinated uh, when mandated by their employers or by the, by the government, uh, the whole reason why we have vaccine passports in, in Boston, New York, all of this was to stop the spread of COVID-19. That's the whole point, to stop unvaccinated people from spreading it to people who are especially vulnerable, right? People with uh, four or more comorbidities or you know, uh, people who are highly overweight, people who have immunocompromised immune systems, stuff like that. You know, I thought the whole point of the vaccine mandate was to was to uh, prevent the transmission. When when the vaccines no longer prevent the transmission, according to the CDC director, this is all. Look, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just a guy on the internet. What do I know, right? I'm just reading the news. That's all I'm doing. I'm reading out of real clear politics. I'm quoting CNN. I'm quoting an interview from CNN. Okay, so what do you want me to say, right? So this is all my whole point. Like whether or not you want to get vaccinated, talk to a doctor. I don't know. What do I know? But the whole point is. The, the policies, right? The policies implemented and the policies put forth and proposed by your government, your politicians, are they justified based on what the experts are telling us? Does it make any sense at all? Or is it just about compliance? Is it just about mass formation psychosis? That's the real question we have to ask, right? So that's what I, I would propose here. Like, look, look, look. So if, if this is the case, why do we have any mandates? And and why do we have politicians coming up on on the, the mass media, on the podium, guys like do, 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 Joe Biden, <laughs> Joe Biden, coming up the most pathetic president the U.S. has ever had. The most pathetic, weak, uh, low IQ. Uh, he's not even low IQ. He, he has, you know, a, a pro, he, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. He's, he's, he's mentally not there. So he comes out and he says, quote, and this is this, by the way, if I were to say this, uh, well, you know, I don't even know if this is true because of course it's a double standard, but technically if somebody were to say this, they should be kicked off of social media because it's misinformation. But he said, this, this is what Biden said. You're not going to get COVID if you have those vaccinations. That's what he said. Okay, so let's check out what he said. That is 100% not true, according to the CDC director. According to the CDC director. The, the various shots that people are getting now cover that. They're, they're, you're okay. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Yeah. What do you want me to say? Okay, I thought we were supposed to trust these people in power. I thought they were the ones that were to tell us and the truth. And I thought they were the experts. I thought they knew it all. I thought they were the all-knowing Dr. Fauci gods, the golden calves we're supposed to worship, right? I don't know. I, you tell me, am I like not, am I not seeing clearly? Am I, I don't know. Is it me? Is it me? Or is it just, does it make not make sense to you? 
Does it look like Joe Biden lied or is just completely wrong at the very least? Does it look like the CDC, does it look like the mandates make sense anymore for vaccines? Does it make, does it make sense to you anymore? And if it does, how? Like, I just don't understand. Okay, so this is more proof that the people in charge don't know what they're talking about. The people in charge, like Sonia Sotomayor, she, she's one of the Supreme Court justices. The Supreme Court is debating right now Biden's federal vaccine mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. They're debating this based on misinformation. Okay, so Sotomayor came out and said that there are 100,000 children in serious conditions, some on ventilators. She said that like a few days ago. And it's not true. It's, I, I know I can say that here on YouTube because it's just so outrageously false, right? It's like saying like the, 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 the moon is made of cheese, right? That's what it's like. It's like we're, we all know this isn't true. This is blatantly, t- totally false. And um, Rochelle Walensky, this is really interesting what Rochelle Walensky has been doing the past few days. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on in the upper, upper echelons of, of the so-called experts because now it's kind of like not making much sense. They're all, they're coming out now and they're, they're, they're like truthers, right? <laughs> like, I don't, like check out what, what she said. Well, th- this, she's reluctantly a truther here because her reaction to, uh, was it Brett Bayer asking her this question about Sonia Sotomayor? It's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. She, yes, she lied. She lied. So, you know, Brett Bear just asked her, you know, Sonia Sotomayor said 100,000 kids are on ventilators. Is this true? And she's like, uh, uh, t- no, okay, no. <laughs> oh, man. Joining us now, CDC Director, Dr. Oh, Michelle Oh, wait, this Walensky. is the whole clip. Dr. Walensky, no, welcome back. Yeah, you got to go to the, you got to go to this one. Because that was like a 12 minute. Well, you just heard about the U.S. Supreme Court currently deciding the fate of the president's vaccine mandates. In the questioning, Justice Sonia Sotomayor made this statement. We have over 100,000 children, which we've never had before, in, in serious condition, and uh, many on ventilators. Now, the- we can find from Friday suggests there are fewer than 3,500 current pediatric hospitalizations from COVID-19. Is that true? Yeah, but, you know, here's what I can tell you about our pediatric hospitalizations now. First of all, the vast majority of children who are in the hospital are unvaccinated. And for those children who are not eligible for vaccination, we do know that they are most likely to get sick with COVID if their family members aren't vaccinated. So the most important thing we can do for those children to keep them out of the hospital is to vaccinate them and to vaccinate their family members around them. Understood. But the we number is not 100,000. It's roughly 3,500 in hospitals now. It, yes, there are, there are. And in fact, what I will say is... Yeah, okay, fine. Yes. Okay. That, I mean, that, that's a pretty epic moment right there. So, okay, uh, Sotomayor was off by 96.5% of... Uh, uh, like, she, she exaggerated it by, like, a lot... Well, no, it's way more than that. She ex- actually exaggerated it by, like, like I don't know, like 100,000% or something. So she said a hundred thousand. It's really only thirty five hundred. I mean, this is this is the kind of clown world that the people in charge are are in, right? They're they're in this fake reality still, and like the people who are actually looking at the numbers, average guys in the internet like me are over here like, hey, look, have you guys looked at these numbers? It doesn't something don't add up with the policies they're trying to put forth. You know, their justifications for it. It's like not making any sense. And the whole group think the mass formation psychosis of the past two years will just scream at you whenever you mention it. But now it's kind of like the cat's out of the bag. I don't know why Michelle Walensky is going on a social, not a social media, but a mainstream media like tour telling everybody what's going on. I don't know. Is she a truther now? Because it sure seems like it. That seemed pretty reluctant though. She didn't really want to go there. She tried to deflect. She tried to deflect, talk about hospitalizations. Yeah, we know hospitalizations. So that's your choice. You want to, you want to take the risk of getting it or not getting it, whatever the roll up your sleeve or fine. It's all up to you, man. That's the whole point. We just want to keep it up to you. That's it. That's all I advocate for. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what to do. At least not here on YouTube. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what to do. So, uh, but if you go to my bit shoot channel, I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, <laughs> that sounds a little weird, but like, seriously, like 
I don't know. Like, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a. I'm not Robert Malone. I'm not uh, Doctor Peter McCullough. I'm not Doctor Fauci. I'm not Doctor Rochelle Walensky or whatever. I'm not. I'm not any of these people. I'm just a guy on the internet, you know. And what do I know? But all I know is, like, I know what I don't want the government telling me to do, or I don't want employers being able to tell you what to do in terms of your your medical decisions. I mean, come on. Come on. Two things that should never be touched, ever. Here, here in the U.S., this is how we live. This is how what we want. We don't want anybody infringing upon our right to bear arms, our freedom of speech, our freedom of religion, our freedom to assemble, and our freedom to put what we want into our bodies in terms of, you know, medical things, right? Whether it be, uh, you know, roll up your sleevers, whether it be medication, whether it be the, the food we eat. You know, I remember they, they were trying to ban raw milk. I think it was in California. This is like 10 years ago. It might still be banned. I don't know. It was like, it was a big issue like 10 years ago. Stuff like that. You know, it's like you have no right, Mr. Government, to tell us what to do in terms of any of these things. Like, if you want to come to us, usually, really, the government just should just go away forever. All of it. All of it. I'm an anarchist. Screw it. For the most part, I'm kind of an anarchist. I don't know. But, like, the whole thing is, like, this is just right in your face. These people are liars. Like, this is a Supreme Court justice. This is supposed to be somebody who's, like, the elder of our society. One of the elders. Like, one of the most wise, knowledgeable individuals. And she's up here saying the most outlandish lies that nobody believes, even on the face of it. Like, it, like it's just common sense. It's like saying that would be, like, compared to saying that there are, like, one billion people that died of Ebola this year. Like, imagine just saying that. Like, it's like, oh, pfft, well, like, what are you, insane? A billion people died of Ebola? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. You know, that's kind of like what she's saying. It's like such an outlandish over-exaggeration. It's kind of like cartoon level. So, hey, man, what do I know? Um, And then... We had Rochelle Lewinsky. This is what else she said. Check out what else she said. That 40% of hospitalizations of people with COVID are not even because of COVID. They were just hospitalized with COVID. This is according to Rochelle Lewinsky, YouTube. Not me. What do I know? Statistics. Uh, it seems to make a big difference if a person in the hospital is in the hospital for COVID-19 or with COVID-19. It's been almost a year since you've been running the agency. Do we have that split on numbers? Um, you know, what I will say is it differs by each variant. So um, some variants, first of all, we're doing screening of many, uh, um, in many hospitals of everybody who's walking in the door. Um, what we're seeing with the Omicron variant is that um, it tends to be milder person by person, but given how large the numbers are that we're seeing more and more cases come into the hospital. In some hospitals that we've talked to, up to 40% of the patients who are coming in with COVID are coming in not because they're sick with COVID, but because they're coming in with something else and have uh, had COVID or the Omicron variant detected. Right. <laughs> well, there you go. Now, now this is where it really gets interesting. Check this out. Is this it? Is this it? No, no, no. Hold on. There, there, there's like clips of her on CNN saying things like, or, or the, uh, let me go to my, um, let me go to my, my Twitter here because I shared this. Check this out. CNN is even questioning this now. Even CNN. I mean, this is where it's like, okay, is this like part of the agenda? I don't know because now the mainstream media is questioning this whole narrative. This is stuff This is stuff I was saying two, two years ago. No, okay, one and a half years ago, one and three quarters years ago, pretty close to two years ago. Check it out. And they're being included. 40% of the people who have COVID don't necessarily have problematic COVID. They're there because they got in a car accident. They get, they're there because, right. um, you know, they, they bump their head. And they're being included as in the hospital with COVID. That number seems kind of misleading. Yeah, I agree, Jake. I it, it surprises me that they have not been able to parse out that data more carefully. I think the data that... Uh, so CNN are now truthers, I guess, guys. So, I mean, just show this to your, to your like... Uh, you know, blue pilled normie like NPC Karen that wants doesn't want to spend time with you because you're jabbing. They're afraid of the coof. 
or you're not jabbed and they're in you're afraid and they're afraid of the coof like just show them that clip they're they're trusted trusted talking heads are now questioning the narrative i don't even know how how what's going on what do you guys think's going on here what's with this week-long media tour of them saying okay okay conspiracy theorists were right you know these are talking points that i had on, on my channel all throughout 2020 what they're saying now in 2022 and i don't know is cat out of the bag are they like switching gears into something else is this like a psyop i don't understand what's going on here am i in the twilight zone cnn is saying this where's the counter on the side you know what it, you know what i think it is actually i think you know what i think it is you know what this just popped in my head and it makes total sense it's because of the 2022 midterms coming up and they want they, they want to they want COVID to disappear so to speak in the narrative for the next year or so uh, and then even into 2024 for that election, right? Maybe they're going to put this all on pause because the, the poll numbers for Biden are just so low. The dis- and the disapproval rating is extremely high for uh, for Democrats. Like it's the high disapproval, extremely low approval for the whole party. And, you know, that's a big risk, especially in the local elections. And that's what, you know, what I encourage everybody, like I'm not, I'm not like a huge person politics guy but i do think that when it comes to especially the 2022 midterms when it comes to local elections you know your state senator your school board member your 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 city your city councilor things like this right you can um you can make a lot of good changes you know you can make a lot of great changes get these candidates that uh look for the candidates that you can primary in the republican national um election so uh, a lot of them, a lot of the people who are pro liberty will run as Republicans, and you know we got to look at the places where there's an establishment Republican that, or even an independent, because you're not going to find any good Democrats no matter what. But like, look at independents and Republicans, and then look to to, to primary the uh, establishment Republican and kick them out and get a better person in there as the candidate that will run against the Democrat, right? So that that is really where you want to go with this, I think. And I think that there's a, there's a real possibility to get some authentic people in local government. I don't think there's any hope for like the president or anything like that. But, you know, you can get some good House members. You can get get some good, even maybe senators, state senators, governors. I mean, you, you got guys like DeSantis. Look, I don't even necessarily fully trust DeSantis. You know, he, he's done some things to, to uh, infringe on free speech in Florida a little bit with criticizing and boycotting Israel and stuff. But um, other than that, I mean, I, I it's like, wow, there's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, so I don't know. But yeah, look at the Republican primaries uh, coming up in the next few months. And I think this is what they're afraid of. And then obviously the, the, the 2022 midterms in November, this is maybe why they're tampering down the rhetoric. And, you know, all of a sudden it's, it's going to disappear from, from the narrative, at least in the U.S., not in all the other countries, though, because the U.S., we got the elections and the disapproval rating for Democrats is just so high. And it's like, oh, we got to do something here. We got to make people think. We we got to tone down this 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 psychotic rhetoric for a bit and make people think that maybe we're in their you know we're they're voting in their best interest when voting for uh you know the the CNN lovers and um the Fauci worshippers so huh, yeah so not only uh, are forty percent of um, hospitalizations from COVID are actually just with COVID or not because of COVID, according to Rochelle Walensky, but Rochelle Walensky also came out and said that seventy-five percent of COVID nineteen deaths, according to her, according to Rochelle Walensky, had four or more comorbidities. So seventy-five percent had four or more co- uh, comorbidities. Everybody's talking about this. Everyone's like, "Oh, look, look, look!" When I literally was talking about this in 2020. I mean, I, you can just see a, a video here, September 1st, 2020. Um, at the time, the CDC even admitted, you know, they came out and they said that 6% six, 6 of deaths from the COOF were, were, were people that didn't have comorbidity. So in other words, 94% of all COOF deaths 
were, are, were people with comorbidities. 94%. And that was a, a figure from the CDC in like August of 2020. That was, this was a year and a half ago. I was talking about this. Now everyone's like, oh, look. Look, 75% have four or more core morbidities. That's four or more core morbidities, right? Four. Like, think about that. It's not just one comorbidity, four core morbidities. Whoa. So check it out. The overwhelming number of deaths, over 75%, occurred in people who had at least four comorbidities. So really, these are people who were unwell to begin with. The overwhelming number of yeah. deaths, over like 75%, occurred... I'm telling you that it's definitely true. Uh, I think. I think. I don't know. Hey, this is YouTube. This is Rochelle Walensky. Is it, WHO agree with me here? I'm not sure. WHO. I don't know. Like these things conflict now, and I don't know what I'm allowed to say. And this, honestly, uh, YouTube's just it's 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 a kind of a lost cause. But uh, I'm gonna try to post this up here anyway. So um, despite all this, you still have this in the in the media out of the LA Times. From Michael Hiltzik. Hmm. Hiltzik. It's an interesting last name. Mocking anti-vaxxers COVID deaths is ghoulish. Yes, but maybe necessary. Yeah, and it's just a disgusting column about how it's necessary to mock the deaths of unvaccinated people from COVID. That's very, very, uh, sick. Uh, that's just, wow. You know, just wow. Um, very, very sick. I, I, I can't even, you know, if I ever saw this guy, I'd probably, mm, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. And, uh, this is going to be for the next, uh, video. I think eh, we'll talk about it a little bit here. So, Pfizer has come out and said that they're going to release a new uh, COVID vaccine that's going to target Omicron and it'll be ready in March of this year. Okay, okay, cool, cool, man. You know, I, I saw some of this guy, Albert Bor Borla, Albert, Albert Borla, the CEO of Pfizer. I saw clips of his interview with uh, Lex Friedman. I'm going to probably watch the whole thing. Um... And, 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 you know, the, you, so they're coming out with this new vaccine in, in, in March. Uh, here's my question. Has it ever occurred to these so-called experts that by the time everybody gets this new <laughs> Omicron vaccine, let's say it takes a few months for everyone to get it, you know, and, and everyone's vaccinated by what, September of 2022 for the Omicron. Has it ever occurred to anybody that by then there'll be like a new variant and then it, you know, the new one might not work by then anyway for next winter. Has it ever occurred? Like, this is why this is like all futile. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this to ourselves? <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I'm just a layman though. You know, it's funny because as I say this, I know. I know that by December 2022, I'll be making a video going back to this video that I posted in January 2022 saying, look, I predicted it and it happened. And this is like a regular thing now. It's becoming more and more regular. I feel like every single thing I talked about in this video is stuff I was talking about two years ago, a year and a half ago. But now the, uh, the CDC director admits uh, admits it all, and I don't know. Am I even allowed? I don't know. This video might be deleted on YouTube. I don't really know. But anyway, so let me know what you guys think about that. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Check out my BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble channels. Those are my channels that I've been posting on, actually, for the past month, two, three months uh, that I you know haven't been posted on YouTube because I've had too many strikes. So yeah, I've been I've been posting. If you're wondering where I've been, that's where I've been. Man, I've been putting out videos the past few weeks, nonstop almost. So check it out. Go over there, subscribe if you haven't. You gotta do it because that's where I post most of my videos now. By the way, most of my podcasts, my podcasts. So on top of that, if you believe in what I do here, if you believe my work has value, obviously share the video. But also, if you want to become a Patreon member 
or contribute with PayPal or with crypto. All that's in the description box below where you can find where you can do that. And uh, But most importantly, just share the video, really, um, because this, this information is important. The average person still wants to look at you funny if you're unjabbed, if you don't have your roll up your sleever, right? And uh, really, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think they should look at you funny um, because obviously, you know, according to the CDC director, according to the CDC director, these jabs don't prevent you from spreading COVID. So I don't know, you know. So show this to your closest uh, NPC buddy, blue pill, um, you know, person who wants to uh, worship CNN, and drop a comment below. It's been press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.